Okay, so now we're going to do basic circuits. Um, so mostly when you have basic circuits, um, you're just going to be rearranging voltage sources and voltage sources, wires, and um, circuit elements like resistors. So here you have a battery connected to, um, to a light bulb. Now, the actual electrons are flowing, um, so the, the potential is highest here at the positive charge, so at, at the positive terminal. So positive charges would flow downhill and go in this direction. Now, of course, your um, charge carriers are actually electrons, so the charge carriers are going to go in the opposite direction. So this has the, um, the electric field in the direction of current in red, but the direction of the electrons in blue. Um, and most of the batteries, most batteries work with a chemical reaction, um, and you get, a, it's a lead acid battery. So you actually have a chemical reaction. Um, you have a chemical reaction leading to a potential difference. And when you have the, um, when you have the a, a chemical reaction that is mostly irreversible, um, that is a disposable battery, but you can have some types of batteries where the chemical reaction is reversible, and that's how you get reverse, you get rechargeable batteries. Um, and then what you have at the microscopic level is that you actually have um, electrons moving from the cathode, which is the positive terminal, to the, um, the anode, which is the negative terminal. You can model a battery as being a combination of a voltage source and a small internal resistance. So no battery can provide um, an infinite amount of, of power, and you'll notice even if you feel batteries after you've been using them, they're warm. Um, by using the, you, you, you model this as, an, as having a small internal resistor, and that gives you um, a reasonable mathematical way of, of describing the energy losses. So here you can see a simple circuit. You have a battery. Here's your positive terminal. Um, so your current is flowing in this direction. Um, now you can, and then you can add a, a, a small internal resistance um, to take into account the, the fact that the battery can only supply a limited amount of current. Um, so here you can see the, um, the potential on the y-axis and the position along the circuit as a function uh, on the, along the x-axis. So your ideal wire has zero resistance, so your potential does not change at all along the ideal wire. Um, and then it jumps up as you go across the battery, so from here to here, the potential goes up. You have a slight internal resistance, so your potential decreases slightly. Um, and then um, you have a segment of wire here, so you have no change in your slope. Um, and then you go through the resistor, and this is an ohmic device. I can tell that because the slope is constant, so your potential decreases constantly until you get back to um, the same potential you started at, because of course this, is, um, this circuit was actually drawn in a loop. Okay. So um, you can have battery testers, which test to see um, if, you act if they're actually totally charged. Um, and you also, um, here you can see a, a small battery charger. Um, and a battery charger reverses the normal direction of current through a battery, so it reverses the, the chemical reaction. Of course, if you charge and discharge a battery over and over and over again, you don't get the, the reaction is not perfectly reversible all the time, so um, you will eventually not be able to react to reverse the reaction enough to get up to the full potential that the battery was designed to carry.